Hello, so welcome to Cube Rescue, a series about taking an unloved Cube Pro 3D printer that had been left in the rain to die and giving it a new life. So uh, this is part three. If you haven't seen the uh, prior two parts, you don't necessarily need to. If you're already familiar with the Cube Pro, then the first two parts won't necessarily have anything new. This part probably does have something new because this is about using third party slicers which is a thing I've had a very hard time figuring out online, and I actually ended up creating my own uh, tool that makes it easier to use Cura. So the idea to use a third-party slicer as even a possibility came around when I found this program called CubeUtils on GitHub. Um, so this is a uh, great free open source program in C that um, essentially does an encryption job to a G-code file, because um, part of the way that cube locks you into using their uh, proprietary slicer is requiring the the files that the 3d printer reads um, to be encrypted but uh, this software didn't do everything I wanted it to because the cube requires the g-code files to be in a very very specific format and um, the the way I started to piece together what this format was is this uh, Google Groups uh, forum that, which is linked off of the GitHub uh, page for um, the Cube Encoder program, that, that, for, for that encryption program. Um, and it needs this file header as you can see here. It, this isn't actually the exact file header it needs, this is slightly wrong. You need to actually specify a material and a material length or else it will say the file's invalid. Um, but that's kind of all the information that needs to be present. Um, so it needs that file header. And then the other thing that it needs that I couldn't find anywhere online and I kind of pieced together myself by trial and error is it needs a G-code file with no comments in it. And that's a problem because uh, Ultimaker Cura, which is my preferred slicer, uh, adds comments to the G-code. And if it has these comments, the, uh, the printer just won't read the G-code file properly. So um, I needed a way to remove those comments and also a way to automatically add that uh, file header to the G-code as the very, very first thing. And um, even if you add that file header to the starter G-code in Cura, it still won't be the very first thing because Cura adds like comments and stuff before the starter code and there's no way to disable comments in Cura. So this is where the idea to, to make um, my own tool came in. So if we go here, this is my GitHub repo now, and um, this takes the same um, cube encoder um, program that I showed you earlier, um, and basically what it does is it just calls it in a Python script um, that edits the G-code file out of Cura to make it work successfully with the cube pro. So it removes all the comments and adds the file headers automatically. Um, and then again, it calls the encoder. So the only thing you need to do is go into Cura, like we have here, um, load up a model. Uh, this is a very difficult model to print, you know, a model where it's important to get your slicer settings right because it's so difficult to print. Um, a model that wouldn't traditionally print very well on the cube because of the cube slicer settings and still won't necessarily print amazingly because the uh, temperature uh, it can't be said exactly and you know it, it's um, I don't necessarily even have my settings tuned perfectly in Cura um, currently um, I've just kind of done some very basic settings but um, you know being able to slice with Cura is just a lot nicer and um, my laptop's running slow because I'm, I'm recording the screen at the same time this is happening but it's slicing um, and once it slices, we can just save it to a file. And um, this is the file that we'll be able to encode. So now we just open our cube converter Python script with Python 3. Um, we enter the file name. Uh, I know the example is txt. I, had, I, I asked a friend what they thought the best way to do this was, and they sent me some example code in um, Python. Um, and I just told them it was a text document because they're not as familiar with G-code as I am. Um, I should probably update that at some point, but basically you just put this in, this script um, thinks for a moment. This is a pretty big G-code file, so the script's taking longer than usual to encrypt it. Um, but now we have the encrypted file, um, the .cube profile, and we can just go ahead 
and open our uh, raw G code file. Um, and you can see we have our file header. We have no comment anywhere in it. Um, it's formatted correctly for what the Cubes Pro is expecting. And then the encrypted file, which again is using a program that I didn't make, but um, is freely available and excellent, um, is here and um, it works as well. So if we plug a flash drive into my laptop, um, we can go ahead and copy the um, cube profile over to said flash drive, um, unplug it, and, um, you know, go ahead and print it. So we're going to plug it into the printer and choose print. Um, and you can see it shows up there as a .g code file. And of course it's a .g code pro, but you know, you know uh, cube takes away the file headers because they're cool like that. Um, so now it's uh, printing. It's asking us to apply glue to the build plate, which we'll do. And then it actually spends the next like four minutes processing. So I'll um, cut that out because who wants to see it process for four minutes? Uh, you know, the CPU in the printer isn't very powerful and it has to decrypt this file that we just had to encrypt. Um, and it does that very slowly because, yeah. Um, really this printer is so, so hamstrung by software. Like waiting four minutes just for it to decrypt is, is ridiculous. Um, and there's no real excuse for that um, because the encryption is just so unnecessary in the first place. So once the printer finally finishes um, processing, um, it will move on to heating. So it's no longer reading from the flash drive um, as rapidly now. The, when it was processing, the light was blinking very quickly as it, as it created all of the decrypted G code, which I think it probably keeps in RAM or in um, internal storage on the printer. Because when you send it over Wi-Fi, the printer has a uh, storage space where it can keep um, these files. Um, so, so it goes to heating. It um, will keep the nozzle in the middle of the bed as it heats the build chamber. Um, you can change the temperature of the build chamber is heated to, um, or at the very least you can turn on and off build chamber heating. I don't know if it actually completely respects the temperature. Um, in theory, um, it should respect the temperature, maybe? Um, it should heat the, the, the build chamber to 40 degrees if it is respecting the temperature preferences. If not, then it heats it to whatever it feels is right for PLA. Um, it doesn't respect temperature preferences for the hot end. Um, so it just heats the hot end to whatever it thinks is right for PLA, which is, I believe, in the 210, 220 degrees range. It's too hot. Um, it, it's hotter than um, I would set it. I would set it to anywhere from 190 to 200. Um, and it causes it to do badly with overhangs, but there's nothing you can do about that. It just, the command to turn the hot end, you can specify a parameter for uh, temperature, but it just ignores that. Um, and does what it feels like. So anyways, uh, once the chamber's heated, it moves over um, the hot end over the um, filament catch thing and heats the hot end. Um, and then once it's heated, it'll do a wipe there and start the actual print. So now you can see it's just finishing heating. Um, and it's going to do a wipe, which I think I unfortunately miss. Um, no, I, I kind of get it. Um, so it does the little wipe across the, the um, filament cleaner, and it starts printing. Um, so again, my current settings aren't perfectly dialed in, but it prints pretty well. Um, I did a test print um, with my initial current settings and got some slight under extrusion, so I um, increased the flow rate. Um, this has a 0.35 millimeter nozzle, so make sure you change that. Uh, the BFB profile in Cura defaults to a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Um, and yeah, that, that's all. Uh, so thank you for watching. And um, if you have any questions about getting Cura to work with your cube printer, let me know. Bye.